Hey, welcome back to Graph Theory. In this video lecture, uh, we're going to wrap up our work in section 6.1 on vertex coloring by looking at something called uh, uniquely k-colorable graphs. Okay, so uh, uh, the goals of this short lecture are to, uh, well, I'm going to first establish an equivalence relation on the set of all k-colorings of a graph that's k-colorable. I'm going to use that equivalence relation to define the main notion, uniquely k-colorable graphs. And then we'll look at a couple of examples and then end with uh, 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 expo explaining the proof of uh, theorem 6.3. Okay, so let's just get to work here. So I'm going to use our, our kind of formal definition of coloring here. So if you give me a K coloring of a graph, that is you give me some function from the vertex set of the graph to the numbers one to K that satisfies, you know, the, the coloring rules, uh, uh, that, that function gives rise to a partition of the vertex set. And I'm just going to denote it by P sub F. So if F is the coloring, P sub F is the partition. And we've talked about this partition. Uh, you write the vertex set as a disjoint union of sets VI, where what's VI? It's those vertex those vertices in G that have color I okay so, so that's how a, a, a coloring gives rise to a partition you if color one is red v1 is all the red vertices uh, v2 is all the blue vertices so on if it, good okay so I'm going to define an equivalence relator sorry I'm going to define a relation I'm going to define a relation on the set of all k colorings all k colorings of G fixed graph let me uh, insert that in here. So it's for the record, all K colorings of G. And here's how it works. I'm going to say that two colorings are equivalent if and only if they have the same partition. All right. So, so uh, uh, when, when you break down these things into the subsets of vertices that all got the same color, uh, if those are the same subsets, then those two colorings are equivalent. Let's look at an example. Oh, oh for, well, sorry, first of all, I'm gonna leave it to you as an exercise to show that that's an equivalence relation, that that's a reflexive symmetric transitive relation on the set of all colorings of this graph, G. All right, so you can do that exercise. And if you want to, in an office hour, or even maybe during our Zoom meeting for this class, uh, if you want me to remind you about what an equivalence relation is and how to think about them, I'd be happy to do that. But lots of you I know um, have had a lot of proof class experience and you, 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 can, you can knock this exercise out. For purposes of keeping this video short, uh, I'm going to just move on here. So we've got this equivalence relation. Let's look at an example. Okay, I've got two graphs drawn here, uh, uh, two colorings of the graph. Both of them are C5. Both of these things are C5s. And I've got a coloring of C5, which I just drew with colors, but I'm showing you here that color one is red, two is blue, three is green. So, so there's a, a proper edge, a proper vertex coloring of C5. You can check it. No two vertices are the same color. Uh, it's minimal. Uh, C5 is not too colorable. It takes at least three colors to color an odd cycle. And what's my partition? Well, my partition would have uh, three sets in it. One of them has the vertices A and C because those are both colored red. B and D because they're both colored blue and then E. All right. So here's a different coloring. G is not the same coloring as F because, for example, uh, G of A is two f of a is one, right? Uh, that's sort of a, a complicated way of saying that uh, f colors uh, the vertex a red and g colors the vertex a blue. So they're not the same coloring, but they're equivalent because the partition, if you look at the, the vertices that get the same color under g and the vertices that get the same color under f, they group the same. So p sub f and p sub g are the same. Same partitions, so equivalent colorings. That's what I mean by them, okay? Uh, here, here's a third coloring of this graph. Called it H. Uh, it's different. It's a different coloring uh, uh, because when you, and, and, and different, not, not in the sense of just different like F and G were, but it's non-equivalent. I should be more precise that F is not equivalent to H. And well, of course it's not equivalent to G either because F and G are equivalent and this is an equivalence relation. But when you break, uh, uh, the partition sets down with H, then A is a singleton, B and D and E and C get grouped together. So those are non-equivalent colorings. All right. So here's kind of the main definition. 
I'm going to call a graph G uniquely K colorable. So that's the term I'm defining, uniquely K colorable, if that equivalence relation has one equivalence class. All right. So in other words, any two colorings of the graph are equivalent. It's uniquely K colorable. C5 is not uniquely K colorable because we are right now on this screen looking at two non-equivalent colorings of it. So, so uh, C5 is not uniquely K colorable. Another way to say this is that there's just one partition of the vertex set into independent sets where, where you want K of them because the independent sets are the sets that receive the same color and you need K of them for K colors. Uh, here, let's look at, look, look at an example. I claim that this graph, I've added two edges to C5. Uh, I claim that graph is uniquely three colorable. And uh, here you can see it's partition. So I claim that any way that you color that graph with three colors, you're gonna get the same partition. And just kind of a quick and dirty way of seeing why that's true. You can see some three cycles in this graph. Let me highlight one of them for you. So that three cycle requires three different colors. So I didn't have to make them green, red, and blue, but I had to make them three different colors, right? And once I choose those three colors, I assign those three vertices, then the remaining two vertices are absolutely dictated because they're also on three cycles that share edges with that first one. So, so you can think about this. I'm not claiming it's an airtight proof, but, but stop the video and convince yourself that no matter how you three color that graph, a is going to be alone, B and D have to get the same color, C and E have to get the same color. You have no choices, right? So, so by inserting those two edges, I kind of destroyed the freedom that we had above. Okay, so uh, uh, it's going to be kind of a shorter video. We just kind of have one theorem to prove, and I decided to carve out the main part of the proof of the theorem into what I'm calling a lemma. So uh, uh, this is a little different than the exposition in your book. Your author proves this lemma in the body of the proof of theorem. I think it's 6.3, we'll see in a second. So here's how uh, I'm gonna carve it out. Uh, if you take a uniquely K colorable graph, so that's my hypothesis, I've got this graph that is K colorable and uh, the equivalence relation has one, one equivalence class. Then when you pick any vertex in that graph, the neighborhood of it contains all the other colors. Yeah, so, so we have a K colorable graph. You pick a vertex, it has some color. That, that vertex has some color, it's one of the K. The neighborhood of that vertex, the things that are adjacent to it, they use all the other colors. It's a consequence of being uniquely K colorable. And here's how we're gonna prove it. Suppose that we take a, a K coloring of this uniquely K colorable graph, pick a vertex, and without loss of generality, let's say that it has color one. We can just decrease the number of indices in this proof. It, it, whatever, it has to have some color, and I'll rename the colors if I have to. So I pick any vertex and assume without loss of generality that it has color one. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, go by contradiction. Suppose that there's some color, some other color, so a color between two and K, that, that, that's not present in the neighborhood of this vertex. All right, so, so you can kind of, uh, I'll draw a little picture here. I've got my vertex V here. Um, it's got color one. Color one is always red to me. And then I'm looking at the neighborhood of V. All the things that are adjacent to V, yeah? And of my K minus one colors, let's say uh, uh, blue isn't there, uh, just to be specific. Color two, maybe. It's not in the neighborhood. So no vertex uh, is blue. So let me just kind of indicate that by making a couple of them yellow and a couple of them green or something like that. All right, so that's what I'm talking about is that I've got this vertex V and in its neighborhood, it's, it's missing some color. I'm saying color I in, in the general proof. So no element in the neighborhood of V has color I. So I'm gonna define a new coloring. I'm gonna define a new coloring and here's how I do it. Uh, 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 take a vertex. And if that vertex is not um, equal to V, then color it the same way F did. If that vertex is equal to V, color it I. Color it with the one that's not in that neighborhood, okay? That's gonna be a coloring because we just said, I mean, here, I can demonstrate it here uh, if you want. What, what's my recipe? You're looking at the picture of a coloring of F right now. Here's how I do it. Uh, I just go, okay, leave everything the way F did, 
and make this blue. It's still a coloring because nobody adjacent to V had color I, so it's still a coloring. But, but, but that coloring has a distinct partition. We just changed the partition because in the coloring for F, the vertex V was in the red partition set. It was in, in V1. Now V is in uh, VI. Nothing else changed. So we changed the partition. So that's contrary to there being a unique, uh, uh, this graph being uniquely K-colorable. These would be non-equivalent partitions. Yeah, so, so, so we've, ch we've changed the uh, partition. We have non-equivalent colorings, I mean, sorry, non-equivalent colorings. So that's our contradiction. Cool. So uh, what's the theorem? The big theorem is theorem 6.3, and it follows, I mean, again, this was the heart of the argument. If you take a uniquely K-colorable graph, then uh, the minimum vertex degree has to be at least K minus one. Remember this delta of G, we're consistently using it, minimum vertex degree. Capital delta is maximum vertex degree. Well, well, that's just a direct consequence of the lemma because we just showed that every vertex has at least K minus one neighbors because you've got to have at least K minus one colors, right? And we can't, we can't use two colors on a vertex or something like that. So if you have at least K minus one colors out there, you have to have at least K minus one neighbors to have those colors. You might have more. The minimum vertex degree has to be at least K minus one. Cool. Uh, as a consequence of that, we can say if, if you have a uniquely K colorable graph, its chromatic number is no more than the minimum vertex degree plus one. Uh, uh, why is that? Well, because the chromatic number is, is, a, is a, a K coloring. Here, I mean, I should be more precise. I mean, when K, you have a unique chi of G colorable graph, then chi of G is no more than delta G plus one. All right. So that's it for this short video. Uh, uh, we can talk about some of the details in this. In uh, this will be the Zoom class for Wednesday, April twenty second. I will see you there.